Hi there, Internet. It's me, Broken Terrain. I'm super excited about this video today. I got an early Christmas present, and I can't wait to show you what it is right after the drop. Well, let's not bury the lead. Here it is, the Latitool 60. It is a laser engraver and cutter. And I had some fun messing around, testing it out. Here is a, uh, an image of, a, I believe, a Wack Fu character. It's a Swedish cartoon anime that my family and I really enjoyed. I had the image sitting around on the computer and I uh, thought I'd give the engraver a shot. And of course, my immediate thought was, I can cut my own windows. <laughs> so here I am having a go at that. This sheet didn't work so well. Uh, but the next sheet did, and I was able to get uh, 20 windows out of one little uh, one little wood board. Here's a little gnome graphic. My wife is a sucker for gnomes, and uh, here's a picture of the setup all together. I also did some walkways. I thought that'd be kind of cool to, to laser cut some walkways out. Here's uh, an engraving of a tabletop that I did. I can't wait to use this tool to help me craft. I've got so many interesting ideas and I can't wait to hear your ideas. So please uh, comment down below. What do you think I could use this laser for to help me craft? Um, yeah, I'm super excited. I tried to do some uh, rune walls and realized that I needed to mirror the one side like I have graphic on the wrong side. Um, but the brick, the brick pattern, which I turned into like a grayscale image, worked pretty good. Um, I don't like these pieces here, but I'm excited. I'm excited about what I can do with it, the possibilities, where I can go with it. And uh, maybe I'll be able to offer you guys something as well uh, with the, the cutting and printing features. So anyway, on to the craft. This is my first real use um, of the laser in a craft. And I'm going to go back to my uh, carved runes and, and LED. I mean, why not, right? It uh, works so well. And now with the laser, I can get some seriously cool, detailed runes. Um, I don't have to just rely on my blocks and random shapes um, that I was bound to with uh, my cutting ability. You can see I've got some Celtic knot work and stuff. So I found some really cool graphics, assembled these three panels, had my laser cutter cut them out. And it, this is just like cardstock, um, like a, a Little Debbie box or a Hostess box cardstock. So nothing crazy. And uh, I've got a, a string of dollar store LED lights, the blue lights. You know, I need to go back to the dollar store and see if they've got more of the LED strips because I've already blown through a couple of them. Uh, and I, this is the, tis the season to stock up, right? So many lights and uh, so many uses for a dollar and a quarter string of LEDs like these. I absolutely love them. I'm going to measure out uh, a rough size for the three decorative panels on my two inch XPS foam and uh, cut a slot out for the battery pack and the switch. Put my uh, base down, basically as a template on the pink XPS foam so that I know where to cut and I'm gonna uh, get it into shape and then cut out the spot for the battery pack. I want it uh, recessed up inside the piece underneath. And you're just gonna take your X-Acto and uh, score the outside space of it then come in with a diagonal cut you're going to be able to rip or cut most of it away and then i've got a nice little metal sculpting tool that's going to allow me to dig the rest out and then i punch a hole um, from the bottom up through the top string the lights in glue the battery pack in and then i'm going to take my hot glue and glue the the base down to my insulation foam the xps foam you see this uh, bit of chip came from uh, one of those multiple pack uh, kid lunch chip uh, chip boxes. Now I'm going to take my 
laser cut design. I'm gonna separate the big design from the two little ones. And they really do just mirror each other. Um, this was ultimately a test for the, the laser cutter and I had no high expectations when, um, when the pieces first came out, but they ended up looking really good. And <laughs> I know it's been a while since I've done a video. I apologize for that. Uh, so I thought I'm going to uh, take care of everything all at once. I'm going to test this laser cutter out and make a video showcasing uh, a piece made by it. You can see I've digged, uh, dug the cavity for the big, uh, what do we call them, arch designs. And now I'm going to do the two smaller ones as well. I don't... Uh, I don't space them perfectly apart. I end up fixing it a little later. It's not too noticeable with uh, uh, some strips of dollar store foam, but um, I guess I was just so excited to get the pieces in and get the lights going. Um, I hope they look really nice and detailed. I, uh, I, I can't stress enough how excited I was while doing this. I mean, I've hand carved runes, right? I've done a, several projects. The, the Hell Throne, the Metal Flower Monument. Um, I know I've got a, at least one more. I can't think of it at the moment, but uh, um, that's it's the coolest effect, but it really is the most amount of work. And you're really stuck with the, uh, uh, the limitations of your human hand and uh, how well you can cut through the material with a blade. So being able to pull a design into the computer and uh, and have it lasered out, I mean, I am just pumped with the possibilities. I'm so excited. And this project uh, just proves to me how effective this is going to be, even if I only utilize it for what I've already been doing, which is the, the backlit runes. Um, I'm already going to have huge improvements with my pieces, so I'm super excited. I've broken a little way from what's going on in the video. Let me get back to it. Uh, after you carve out the sections for the, the lights to go behind your panels, you're going to hot glue and cover those in tin foil, and this is going to help reflect all of that light from the LEDs. I do have a little bad LED placement in this particular piece. The panels don't all light up uniformly um, and that's my fault for how I glue the uh, lights in. But the tin foil really helps correct for this. Don't forget the tin foil step. It's gonna reflect all that light and, uh, and make your runes beam. Then I'm gonna take a nice piece of clear plastic from any kind of packaging. This was a top from a food container. And I'm going to uh, scuff up both sides with some sandpaper. And this is gonna take uh, the transparency down a bit. It's still gonna be a bit opaque, but, uh, um, or transparent, but now it's a bit opaque in that it's going to um, disperse the light throughout the entire area. I'm gonna white PVA uh, glue those panels down to the clear plastic, then cut them out separately, and then uh, glue the LEDs into place, and then glue the panels down around those LEDs. And you can see I'm already getting a really strong effect. It's looking really good. Super excited. A little more tin foil at the bottom to reflect the light back up into the sections and then i'm going to glue the back down to the what will be the base or the floor and here you can see uh, that light's just beaming through you can even see it coming through the less inked areas of the packaging so super excited with the led effect but i have to cover up some of those uh, gaps and edges and to do that I'm, I measure out and cut a like a face plate or a fascia plate out of the dollar store foam core. Uh, again the spacing isn't quite right so I'm going to have to separate all three pieces and come in and fix that with some trim pieces but no big deal it works really good and you can see it's covered up those edges a lot. And it looks really good even with the light on. 
and I'm so sorry. I made a pair of stairs and some rocky outcrops and I must have done it all off camera. I just got real excited and just started crafting and building and uh, I missed that part. But that's okay because this piece has inspired me to do uh, a table's worth of scatter to match it. So look for that in the hopefully incredibly near future. And then it was time to do the brick tile. I, uh, I like laying the individual tiles of different sizes and shapes. This is roughly like a half inch square, um, a half inch by quarter inch long piece, and quarter inch by quarter inch square. And I use these three shapes to uh, create the, uh, the walkway in a randomized fashion. While I'm finishing up uh, some of this brickwork here, I just want to remind you to uh, like the video if you like what you're seeing, if you like the way the project turned out, if you're excited uh, for that laser, <laughs> hit that like button and please post a comment. What do you think I should do with this laser? I've got some ideas myself, but uh, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, you guys always think of stuff that just would never have occurred to me. And I'm super excited to utilize this, this piece in any way possible. So please, if you got some really cool ideas, uh, hit me up in those comments. I can't wait to hear from everybody. Of course, if you want to see more videos like this, please go ahead and smash subscribe so you can get all these videos as well. Um, back to it, you can see I carved some cracks into the into the back piece and i love them it's it's funny how those simple little effects really sell this project and those cracks those big deep um breaks in the stone really really sell this piece i love it of course what i should have been doing while building it uh was putting on all the texture with the tin foil i have to go back while it's all made and do it, it takes a little while but it's well worth it uh, don't be like me. Don't forget your your uh, your aluminum foil texturing while you're making it. It'll be that much easier. Then I'm going to flock with my uh, craft sand a bit at the base, a little bit in the cracks of the uh, of the stone. And at this point, I was thinking snow. I've never done snow before. And I don't normally like to do snow. I like to keep my things modular. And if you cover your pieces in snow, it's real hard to imagine them without it. So I have not done snow. And um, my plan for this project was in fact to do snow this time. I hit everything with that black uh, matte paint and uh, matte Mod Podge as a base coat. And I very carefully uh, paint the uh, the chipboard with the runes on there as well because as you saw from the light tests that chipboard's a little thin and uh, it blazes as well and I really want just those runes to to light up so it's very important to cover those panels and be very careful around the runes and then for the stone I want to do uh, like a really cold interesting kind of magical look so I'm going purple cobalt blue and then I'll finish the stonework off with a turquoise on the top and it's going to go from the dark purple to the powerful blue to the very light blue at the very tips. I really really like the way the colors come out. It adds this immediate like cold effect to the look and uh, and really sells the idea that this this monument is buried deep in the snows and ices of the north. I love it. I hope you like it too. Next, it's time to do the stonework. And I go to my old faithful gray storm. It's already got kind of a, a real heavy bluish look to the gray. And I think it's going to complement my already kind of bluish purple stonework. Just making the whole thing look very cold, very frigid. I'm going to do all of the stone. And I'm going to do the, uh, the wall arches as well. And um, just like I did with the black base coat, I'm going to carefully paint the gray onto my runic slabs. I just want as much um, paint on there to cover up the light on, on all the other areas except for the runes and the cutouts. Then I'm gonna take my granite gray, which is my much lighter gray. I'm gonna do the two pillars 
in the middle of the back part there. And I'm gonna go in and pick lots of different bricks here and there all throughout the piece, all the way up the stairs and at the platform itself. Then I'm gonna take my elephant gray and do the same thing, hitting bricks here and there and just giving it a varied grayed look. Um, normally I do lots of browns and tans and things, but I wanted this piece to look stark, cold, blue, just frigid. And uh, I think I really pull it off. After the black and the gray, I go in and I just give a good scrape to any place that the paint might have a little, uh, like overdone it on the runes a little bit. And then after the scrape, you can see I've got my granite and elephant grays and they kind of bled together. I'm gonna to use this as a, a highlight for the stone. So I'm gonna take the two um, stone colors there and I'm just gonna uh, give a, a nice dry brush or a hefty dry brush to all of that blue, turquoise, purple stone work. And that's gonna blend it all in really well and actually blend it in with the stone a bit too. It works really well when, uh, when all finished. Then it's time for my homemade black wash. It's still kicking. Thank goodness, I love it so much. Gonna have to make a new batch soon though. And I just spread it all over, the whole piece gets it. All over the stonework, all over the mountain stone. It just gets in all the cracks, all the crevices, dolls the colors down mutes everything brings it all together I love the look love my homemade black wash and uh, I'm gonna have to figure out how to make a new batch oh I'm really worried about it <laughs> yeah, it looks fantastic now that it's dried I'm gonna go back with a white normally I'd recommend an off-white but again this is gonna be cold frosty uh, so I go plain white, just a stark white, and I'm going to take this white and I'm going to dry brush the edges and, uh, and uh, tips and, and textures of the stone and of the brick. Not too heavy though. Uh, this really is just a highlight. I'm going to go back in with the white and uh, um, I've got a much smaller brush. I'm gonna load it on a bit heavier than a dry brush, and I'm going to uh, stipple it. I'm gonna stipple it in the cracks and crevices where I, where the frost would build up, where I'm gonna place my snow, uh, just everywhere. I'm gonna put it in ear, a, um, where the bricks don't quite sit right, where they're irregular, just anywhere where snow and frost could build up. And this is gonna do a great job. To be perfectly honest, if you don't wanna spend the money on a snow effect, or if you don't wanna make your own snow effect, by the time I got done frosting this piece up with some stippled white, it looked amazing. It looked incredibly cold and frigid, and it would have been just fine as it was. That being said, <laughs> I went to my gaming store, my local hobby shop, picked up some Valhallen Blizzard uh, texture paint and uh, and just started scooping it on and placing it down and this was going to be my snow and ice buried in the corners and cracks and crevices and uh, this point this exact moment was when I realized why everybody loved doing snow covered pieces I had been very much against it because I like things modular and if you put snow on it it can't be modular anymore. It has snow on it. Um, <laughs> I still believe that. I do. But now I want some things with snow on them. <laughs> this was so much fun to do. I absolutely loved it. The texture paint was so fun to work with. And the end result was flipping amazing. I loved it. And I'm absolutely pumped. I can't wait to do more scatter to match this piece. Super excited. Now some beauty shots showing the whole thing off. Of course, first off with the light. And it does look really good. Even, uh, even well lit, it looks really good. Um, 
but of course I live for uh, shutting off those lights and turning on my light effect. I mean, that is why I made the piece after all. And I absolutely cannot get enough of the piece in the dark with the lights on. I absolutely love it. Um, and I f fancy myself a photographer <laughs> whenever I have a piece like this with just the LED effect. I love putting the minis down on the table and, uh, and taking some great pictures of it. Uh, I hope you've really enjoyed this video. I hope you're just as excited for the possibilities of, of laser cutting and, and engraving as I am. I can't wait to hear your comments. Please, if you like the video, smash that like button. I really appreciate it. It helps me out. Want to see more videos like this? Don't forget to subscribe so I can bring you every video that drops. Um, it's Christmas time. Christmas shopping. Uh, please, if you're going to hit up Amazon, hit one of my affiliate links. And even if you don't want that product, go shopping after hitting my link. I believe that still, uh, still helps out the channel. It helps me out. Of course, I have a subscribe star, um, which you can help the channel out directly. And uh, you can even get your hands on my pen and paper RPG game that way. I think you'll love it. I think it'd make a great gift for the gamer in your life. So, hey, check it out. And uh, thank you so much. I'm going to have to re-record this. It's my daughter come in looking goofy at me. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Like each other, love each other, craft on.